Good morning, it's Alexor again, and today I have a very, very important video for you because I think the Circle of Fortune is still, is still better than the Merchant's Guild for a bunch of reasons, but mostly because you actually learn something about the game yourself if you have to farm for the items instead of just buying them on the market. So while we're here in the Observatory, in this beautiful place, right? But there's a bunch of things we have to know about the Circle of Fortune. Um, and how to use it properly to get the best out of your prophecies and get the best items from it. So what you first want to do is you go to Galila over here, right? Our great Galila. Then you go to Greater Lenses. These are all the ones you want. And down here there is one... Oh, you can't see this. Hmm. Anyway, um, let's buy it. There it is. Refracting Lens of Wealth. 90% more cost of all prophecies, but they offer double the rewards on completion. That is a key thing. Now, this does make them all more expensive, so you need more favor to actually buy the prophecies, but you get double the rewards. So if you have, I don't know, a prophecy that gives you eight unique rings, for example, you will get 16 instead. So your chances are much higher to actually find something good. You want to have this one for sure, especially later down the line. Now, um, you need some favor to be there. I have 170,000 at this point. So this is more of a late game thingy. But let's be honest, you really only get to the observatory very late. At that point, you should have already some sort of um, favor. Because in the beginning, in the Keeper's Camp, right? Right at the beginning of the like the first the first town you come to, there is Galila already standing around. So right there, you actually should join the Circle of Fortune. So you will get your favor as you play through the campaign. Very important. So you should, you should have enough to actually buy these. So you need this one because that makes it so much better. It just doubles the, the use of your prophecies. Then you also want to have... Like if you think about what do you actually do late game to farm your items? You play monoliths, right? You don't play dungeons, you don't play the campaign. So you want to mostly get these on monoliths. Now you can only have three lenses. We would actually need four because this one, for example, 100% reduced chance for prophecies to have campaign events. Basically, just no campaign events in your prophecies. Um, this one is no dungeon events, no monolith events. This is bad. We want to have monolith and no arena. So I usually go definitely for no campaign because then you, it's difficult to get there. And I remove the arena events because I fucking hate arena. So I'm sometimes left with dungeon events. Then you just have to reroll, okay? But definitely get two of these greater lenses that completely remove... Anything you don't want to play. Very simple. That just makes your searching for prophecies easier. So definitely get the campaign off. And I would recommend you also remove Arena. Because that just takes forever. You can run some dungeons if you want. Sometimes it's interesting. Especially if you find one for the Temporal Sanctum. And you want to just craft an item anyway. That can be useful. So that's what I usually do. Then once you have this. You go up here to your prophecies. Let's for example say we want to search a weapon. By the way, you don't actually have to walk to these. You can just go to any one and then you can just, with these buttons, you can switch to the other ones, right? North is the um, body armor and armors and belts. Left is idols and glyphs. Bottom is accessories, so that's rings and amulets. On, and east, we have our weapons. Now, for some reason, I don't actually have enough lenses here. So we go to the stash. COF. This is the campaign, and where's the other one? Arena. Actually, I bought a ton of these, as you can tell, accidentally, but whatever. And what you do is to go here, you hit I to open your inventory, and then you just throw them on the bottom left. I gotta remove myself. You see the EOS lenses down here? You throw them in there. Bam. Actually, I put... <laughs> yeah, I got the same twice, doesn't matter. You get the idea. You just put the other one in there as well. And then... Close that, and now your prophecies. Uh, first of all, you gotta bottom right always show reward icons and disable confirmation windows. That just makes them show up because if I don't do this, you will have to hover over them, and that sucks because you want to see what's actually it. Now, let's for example say we want to have a a wand, right? For example. None of these actually have what we want, right? This is, um, you can tell by the icon, this is a mace. 
this is an X. We don't want that, so we reroll. Boom. Next one. Offhand, set, uh, set weapon. I don't want to set weapon because they suck. So ignore this as well. Reroll. So what you will learn very fast is you're going to reroll a lot. Right? This is what you want to do. You don't want to have shitty prophecies. You want to have the best prophecies. So you're going to reroll a lot. It's only 320 favor. It doesn't matter. And like if you're 100k, it doesn't really matter. You want to reroll a lot to get your good items. So see, so far there is nothing. I want to have unique, a unique wand. Yes, I skipped ahead as you can tell, but I'm still rerolling. It, it took 10 rerolls. I still have nothing. But that's the, the game you want to play, with, especially with this lens that gives you better prophecies. So this, for example, is interesting. It says you need cast a weapon, right? A cast a weapon could be a scepter or a wand. So it could be both. So I would take this, for example, like on, on just on the weapon. And let's, for example, say, okay, this is this is the one we want, right? Now we got actually got to look into what it does. So we hover over it. It says, event, death of God Hunter Argentus in the Stolen Lands timeline. Gives you eight of these unique cast weapons. This, for example, is a very good one. Very great um, prophecy because it's a very simple. It's There is no corruption. It's just one dude. You kill the boss once and you get eight of these. That's great. Then you just click on it. And if you do, you get this one and I can actually do it. Whatever. Prophecy acquired. You lost the favor and then it rerolls again. Now we want to have more, obviously. But I actually chose a bad thing with the wands because they are apparently pretty rare. As you can tell, it's mostly these weapons. Like the... the the um, swords and shit. There's another one, the Hermit. Event, Deaths of Exiled Mage. Now you see here on the left, there's a three. Okay? That says you have to kill an Exiled Mage, any Exiled Mage, anywhere, because there's no condition. Three times, then you, your prophecy is, is done. So this is also a good one. I like going for Exiled Mages. Because you play through that anyway, right? You, like, you, like, you kill them anyway. So the idea really is with the prophecies you choose... You want to choose prophecies of things you usually do anyway. That is exiled mages. Then there's also ones that have kill... Um, what are they called? Not the void prophets. These void thingies. Like rare bosses. The void... What are they called? I don't know. There's also the siege golems, for example. So there's a bunch of prophecies that want you to kill things you encounter anyway while playing your monoliths. So you want to have these. These are great. If you go for the bosses, like I did with the God Hunter Argentus, then if you choose one boss, try to find prophecies that all go on the same boss. So what I usually end up with is I have five prophecies on the God Hunter Argentus, right? Because I just randomly found them, going through this and re-rolling a hundred times. And then I just go to kill the God Hunter Argentus, then I have 30 items, unique items being dropped from that boss. And then you go through them and see what is what. Because you just want to have as many items dropped as possible because that increases your chances of actually finding the item you want. If it just drops one item or like five, then your chances are very low. So you just want to have this sort of item explosion with that one boss you do. That's the most efficient way. You don't lose much time and you gain most of it back. Just very useful. So let's, for example, take this one. It's not a bad one. Now, I hope that I also find this other one that sometimes... Um, otherwise, I'll just sh um, tell you and I can't show you. Doesn't seem to be here now. Because there is a prophecy event that costs 22,000 favor. Okay? Sometimes you see this. It didn't happen to me yet, but sometimes it's here. Um, no, it doesn't seem to be here. Feels bad. And the reason it's so expensive is because at the bottom where it says right here, unique two-handed sword, it would say unique two-handed sword, guaranteed legendary potential. So you are guaranteed one item. It's usually just one with LP on it, but it's 22,000 favor. Do not take these prophecies. They suck. <laughs> okay? Because that just means it will give you any unique item. It's going to have one LP on it. <laughs> But it costs you 22,000 favor. That's just not worth it ever, okay? You're much better off getting 8 or then 16 of your two-handed swords. And a bunch of them will have LP anyway, right? Because it's just a random roll. It's random. So you're much better off doing that 
instead of farming their 22k fable thingy they, they are bad ignore these some of them are expensive there's there are good ones that cost like 9k or something some of them are very good so up to like 9k i think is sorry about that up to like 9k is usually one you can take which are still good like that will give you i don't know nine of these by just killing a bunch of bunch of rare dudes or something so that's a great prophecy but they are rare but what you can already tell here is i'm re-rolling a lot right a lot most of the time i'm re-rolling that's 7k for example what does it give me unique one-handed sword yeah the unique one-handed swords are kind of rare so i guess that's why it's expensive oh no the reason yeah i just missed it interesting key thing which is gets overlooked a little bit if you look at this as it says the saber then eos prophecy right and beneath that it says fulfilled zero or three times some of these prophecies you can do multiple times like this, in this case you gotta kill him one that's the the one beneath the the skull one time hask of elder gaspar then you got the then you get the unique one-handed sword but you can do this whole prophecy three times and you will get the rewards three times if you kill him three times that's why it's more expensive now with bosses i wouldn't really do this because then you would have to kill the boss three times and again you have to go through all the stability that's just a lot of work and not worth it but sometimes these also drop for like exiled mages or i guess in the future also for um nemesis or again for the rare rare mobs you encounter right like the siege golems if you find these take them because that's three times the rewards you can get from this by killing these anyway with just one prophecy prophecy so these are great if you find them they get overlooked a little because it just says it's in this brown bar there and just you can miss it but they are great you, you want to have these prophecies okay if possible but again as i said you will be re-rolling a lot re-rolling is is your thing it says any dungeon here this for example deaths of rare enemies six times any rare enemy in any dungeon gives you that reward that's pretty good all right that's pretty good it's also very cheap in fable that's a pretty good one so what you want to end up with is eventually if you go on y and click on your prophecies you want to have like two two rows full of prophecies so when you keep playing just randomly they drop okay that's very easy now the rank rewards they will be changing in 1.1 so this is still 1.0 as you know this will be changed you will climb up faster and the key thing here is also this will be changed just so you know it won't they won't be duplicated they will just be rolled a second time I meaning you just get twice as many because duplicated is actually bad for you that just means you duplicate bad uniques you roll and who wants that you just want to have more chance to roll uniques so this is going to get changed to twice as many meaning if you drop eight uniques from your prophecy it will drop 16 and if you also have your if your lens for example that was four initially then it goes to eight or to 16 and with this you can also go to 32 then if you are lucky to find one like that so we will have a lot of item drops with this and i think that's going to be ranked 12 though but it's easier to get to it so yeah um again you'll mostly just be re-rolling that's the key thing i want to tell you and you can spend all your favor right away depending on how much you play I usually if I wanna if I search for an item if I want to have one specific item I usually drop like 60 to 80k favor on it um on getting prophecies because you reroll a lot but also finding good ones is usually expensive so if there's a really good unique you're searching for you gotta have to drop at least 50k favor on it um to actually have enough prophecies to get it in the end but using favor also increases your your rank right so that's what you want this is helpful you don't want to sit on a million favor that's useless you want to spend that favor because that increases your rank all right that was it for the prophecies i hope that helped if you have any more questions let me know in the comments if anything is unclear if i missed something whatever it is let me know below and i hope it helped for you to start with the new cycle soon and i'll see you in the next video